Hello folks, welcome again. Today we're into the second chapter of Paul's letter to the Galatians. This chapter is just staggering. If ever there was a chapter that emphasised what the entire Reformation was all about, this is the one. Galatians for Martin Luther was his favourite book in the whole Bible. And there can be no disguising it, no pulling punches here. This chapter is all about justification by grace alone. Paul's definitive message, the bedrock upon which so much of his theology is built. There is no single thing that we can do to add to or contribute towards our salvation. It is found only in Christ. And if there was something that we could do, if we could be justified through obedience to the law, then Paul says it himself in the final verse of this chapter, as clearly as he can put it, Jesus would have died for absolutely nothing. What a huge statement this is to make. If we're able to be justified by keeping the law, then the cross, the resurrection, becomes meaningless, worthless, irrelevant even. So folks, this is at the absolute centre of the gospel. This is at the absolute centre of Christian faith. There are few more core things than this. We cannot afford to get this one wrong. And that's why Paul devotes so much of his writing to it. The first 10 verses or so here in this chapter are really a testimony by Paul revealing how the gospel was meant to be shared with the Gentiles. This message is not just for Israel. God's promises are far too big for just one race or one nation. So where Peter had been God's chosen man to bring the gospel to the Jews, so Paul was God's chosen man to bring the gospel to the Gentile world. And Paul wants to clearly show how this was agreed upon by the apostles in Jerusalem. He references in verse 9 how he got this seal of approval from the three pillars, as it were, that's Peter, James and John. So there was unity, there was agreement about this. So Paul has the authority from God, which matters most of all, but also the support of his brothers in Jerusalem in sharing the gospel to the Gentiles. They had seen, they had heard that this was a fruitful ministry uh, that Paul had, and so they bless it. Notice in passing verse 10, little verse kind of tucked away, reveals the importance though of helping the poor. Always something that the Lord God himself had made abundantly clear through all of the scriptures. Always something that Jesus had emphasised and now something that the apostles and early church leaders took very seriously. Sharing the gospel came first but at a close second was remember the poor, remember the poor. And that's a challenge still for us as churches today, as individuals today. How do we remember the poor? The second half of the chapter then deals with what we mentioned at the start. It, it's clear that Kind of during this transitional period from Old Covenant into New, from the gospel being taken beyond Israel and into the Gentile world, there was division about how to maintain certain traditions. And Paul mentions how even Peter got it wrong on, on one occasion and how it influenced Barnabas for the bad as well. Such was the depth of these traditions, such was the weight that had been placed upon them. Even Peter, the great apostle, the ally of Christ, the one who knew the grace of God at work in his life and knew his salvation came from Jesus alone, even he was enticed back into the old ways for a moment. And Paul could not stand idly by and watch as this hypocrisy went on. So he challenged Peter. The lesson being this attitude must be challenged. There is but one gospel. Justification is only through faith. That is our way to salvation. For anyone to suggest or act otherwise, it was inexcusable. So finally then we get to this beautiful phrase in verse 20. Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. What a description this is of the power that the gospel has. You can see the transformation, can't you? Remember who this man is. This was Saul, the man who sought to destroy the church, the man who hated Jesus, the man who smiled and held the coats as Stephen was stoned to death for his faith in Christ. Now here he stands, declaring, my old sinful self is gone. I was crucified along with Jesus and I no longer live for me. I live for him with the spirit of grace empowering me. He's not saying he's perfect. 
but he is saying he's transformed and it's all through faith in Jesus who loves him and gave himself for him. That's what it means to be saved, folks. We are dead to the law, but alive in Christ. These are crucially important reminders for us about the basis of our faith. So until Sunday, stay safe and God bless. Thank you.